Hey folks, good morning, good Tuesday morning, yes, chilly, happy December, Florida winter, all that good stuff. All right, one of you stand on one shoulder, one of you stand on the other, there we go, okay. Um, December the 1st, it's cool outside, don't say it's cold, Not it's cold. cool, all right? Cool. I think those of us who have come from the great north have forgotten what cold really is this is not cold this is cool <laughs> this is not cold um, all right I have my uh, my boys here and Lily's back there hanging out but they're gonna they're gonna critique my joke this morning for you all are you ready boys you ready yes all right why do ducks have feathers? Why? To oh. cover their butt quacks. <laughs> and I covered that one yesterday. <laughs> Is that funny? You, tell, you haven't already heard that one? You heard that you one? Heard that oh, one? oh man. I got a joke. You, you have a joke? Yeah. All right, so let's hear Why your joke. Why did time stop? Why did time stop? Because the clock bro broke. Oh, up. man. Because the clock broke. That's a good one, too. That's an old one. All right. Very good. <laughs> well, good to have you all on here. Good to see you guys. Hope all is well. Um, we're going to jump right in to our devotional this morning uh, and talk about a couple things. Uh, and, and these deal with uh, holiness as well and the way that we uh, the way that we live life, the way that we understand things, all that good stuff. Uh, but particularly dealing with uh, weakness in our lives. Uh, we live in a, uh, in a culture that does not like to um, show or exhibit weakness. We live in a culture where weakness is looked upon as, as, uh, as a very, very bad thing, um, which we understand through scripture, actually it's, it's not. Uh, to understand that we are weak and that he is strong is one of the best things, right? Uh, we have books that are written about, you know, how we're supposed to, to find our strengths and, and better our strengths and do things like that. And, and uh, I, I think that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I think we should, you know, find ways to continue to, uh, to improve and, and become uh, stronger and better people all the time. But we also shouldn't shy away of our weaknesses either. Um, in fact, uh, in our, you're going to see in our scripture today, we learned that that our weakness is one of the best ways that we can spread the gospel. Uh, your witness to the world comes out of your weakness, and your weakness is, and not necessarily our strengths. A lot of people have that backwards. We, uh, uh, we, we think that the, the world is impressed by Christians' uh, prosperity or how good they are. Or look what, how, how blessed they can be. That's really not it. That really doesn't impress the world. You know why? Because they can see that stuff anywhere. They can find that anywhere. Just watch the Hallmark Channel. You're going to find it, right? <laughs> what impresses non-believers is how they see Christians, believers, handle adversity, handle weakness, deal with that in their lives. Your suffering, your success, sorry, your suffering and not your success, your suffering and not your success, that's what gives you credibility. When they see you react in the hard times. Your faithfulness, not necessarily your fame, is what earns you respect as a believer. The Apostle Paul, I said, was, was a pro. He was an absolute fantastic pro at using this. And this is our passage of scripture from this morning. And, and this is he, he wrote this scripture uh, while he's in prison. Surprise, surprise, right? This is what it says. I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. See, Paul was a, a, a master at using his pain to model, to show the message of Jesus. While he was chained in a prison, he wrote letters to churches that became a good chunk of our New Testament Bible. Paul said this also, and this isn't going to be a passage of scripture, but he said this, and everything we do show that we are true ministers of God. We find that in 2 Corinthians 6, 4. That includes how we handle pain. 
That includes how we handle uh, hardship, how we handle um, adversity in life, how we handle defeat, how we handle our problems, uh, the mistakes that we make, sin that we, that we encounter. Um, all those bad things in life, that includes all that stuff. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. Do you know that it doesn't take it doesn't take uh, God's power to handle good things, but it sure does take God's power and strength in our lives to handle the bad things, doesn't it? It doesn't take God's power to handle the good stuff, but it sure does take it for the hard and the bad stuff. See, God's power gives us an opportunity and a strength to patiently endure. Patiently endure all things. The world really doesn't have an answer. Our culture doesn't have an answer on how to endure. That's why you can flip on to every talk show and every uh, this person and that person and this guru and that thing and they all have a different answer and none of them really seem to work. Or if they do, they're very, very temporary. Followers of Christ, though, for centuries, centuries, have endured suffering and hardship and trouble as every kind of way to bear witness to who Jesus is and his good news. In fact, in, in, in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about how he went to the cross, enduring its hardship and pain with joy for you. We're called to endure that with, with joy you know that your your deepest ministry, some of your best times are going to kind of come out of your deepest hurt and your deepest pain, your deepest life messages, and, and that will come out of your deepest sorrow if we stay connected to him. Because that's where our strength, that's where that patient endurance comes from. It comes from him. So in every area of your life that you've had pain, in every area of your life, I want you to know that you have a testimony. You have a story. And that story will speak much, 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 much louder than all of your successes combined. So, the question for today is, how are you going to use that to bless someone else? You know that you can use your pain to bless others. Well, that's it for today. It's December 1st. It's cool outside. <laughs> We're getting ready to have some coffee here. And uh, morning from the tundra. Yes, yes, I know. All you people are cold. I see that. But uh, find an opportunity this week to use the gifts that he has given you to bless others. Looking forward to a great day. Uh, love y'all. Appreciate you. Hope your day is successful. Uh, find opportunities uh, to share your story, <clears throat> your story of goodness with others so that they might have an opportunity to know Jesus. Guys, love you. Appreciate you. Remember, as he's being a blessing to you, take that opportunity to be a blessing to others. We'll see y'all again. Bye-bye. <laughs>